Hello YouTube, thanks for uh, clicking on my video. Today I'm going to be creating modifications for a uh, hand wheel or flywheel. It's actually a hand wheel off a Singer sewing machine um, and I'm going to prepare it for casting. This video turned out a little bit different than I expected. Uh, I tried to fix it in post. But if you find anything interesting, I would appreciate it if you do all those things on the screen. Hello YouTube. So this is the part that I'm looking to cast. This is a, um, hi Larry. This is a hand wheel off of a Singer sewing machine. I don't know the model. Let's see, let's check the dimensions here. That's, mm, near five and a half. Um, and it's got a lot of smooth um, parts on it. Uh, I believe it was probably originally cast. I mean, I'm sure it was. Um, and it's got these tightening bolts. And for my purposes, it's just going to be like a hand wheel or a flywheel. And I need to uh, fill this uh, before making a uh, mold pattern. So just trying to figure out what to do. You know, I had this bolt in here. Um, kind of round off the front. And then I had a nut on it, but that just extends the length and it's not real helpful. Here you can see some Petro Bond in the end of that bolt. Uh, I thought about like machining it all off, but then I go, I don't know. So anyway, what I want to do is fill that hole. And so I've got this bolt that fits the hole. Um, and then uh, I can tighten these screws and then cut this flush. Um, but I'm, I want to do something with this uh, to kind of round it out, something like that. So over to the lathe. I'm thinking I want to cut this back edge off just to start. And I'll use the parting tool for that. Uh, so rounding off, I have this uh, router tool that's just got a little bevel to it. Um, we'll go ahead and mount this up in the vise and then round over this edge. Just going to extend this out a little bit. Kind of working that across um, because it's not the exact bevel and as you can see I still have these flat spots here but I'm thinking that if I go too far deep um, I'm gonna have a flat surface anyway I'm gonna test fit it I think that'd come across in a casting and it would look kind of cool so I think I'm gonna leave that Okay, so now to part this off. This is the part I'm not good at, the measuring stuff. Okay, about 0.4. Just have to wing this. Let's go ahead and spin it up. 
good enough for my kind of work. Yeah, I know you're all saying, well, Don, that doesn't look like a cutoff tool, right? I know. I gotta change the angle up. This is getting boring, I know. Okay, let's make this cut. See how close we got. That's pretty close. Let's clean that nubbin off. So uh, this is, I'm going to use this stem for pouring as well, so I'm not really highly concerned about that. Uh, so the next kind of operation I'm thinking about is this here. I want to make a, I don't think that this will cast perfectly and I'll have some issues and this is kind of, I know you can't see, but this is a little thin. So my kind of thought was is to go ahead and build a build up a plate to kind of flush Actually, that up. I'll show up. you here. I'm just, I was uh, playing with uh, the Petrobond. Now, obviously that doesn't match perfectly because I had that bolt in there before, but there's the pattern fitting in there and kind of where I'll put the, the parting dust um, for casting. I have a whole bunch of this acrylic plastic. Um, so that's wide enough to cover the hole. So the thought is is to cut the square and drill the center hole and mount it and then take these corners off with the lathe. We'll just take this dimension, which is three inches. Oh, check that. And just copy that over to here. And there's my cut line. I'm just going to use the DeVault uh, 20 volt jig saw just because it's convenient. It's right there handy. It's on the shelf. Uh, the skill saw seems to make a huge mess. kind of new to uh, like doing casting work um, on this hand wheel uh, these uh, spokes here are pretty narrow um, now this outside looks like it was machined you know the thought is to pour it from the center but I have to have the um, have to have the uh, brass flow through these and fill that a little concerning you know, I don't know how it was originally cast. I don't know if I'd go on the outside or what. Got a visitor here. Oh no, I got somebody trying to exit. I'm gonna go ahead and find the center of this uh, block of plastic. And um, we'll just go ahead and set this at one and a half because it's roughly three. Okay, I'm going to pull these edges up off the vise, and 
I'm not going to use the cut edge. I'm going to use the, well, the other cut edge. Whoops. Mm. Clumsy. So I'm going to call that mark there the center of the plastic. So let's go over to the drill press mill and uh, check our hole size. So I know this vise is like right at three inches and it maxes out. When you're wearing sandals and you're in the shop, which you shouldn't do, and you're dropping heavy metal, make sure to um, get your feet out of the way. Okay. Just for parallelism, I'm just using the top of the vise here. I'm not getting to a high level of perfection. This is a way that I center up uh, the mill for a hole. I have this little craftsman bit. I'm sure there's lots of ways to do it, but it's got, you know, I don't know, two different angles on it. But I'll just chuck this up into the mill, and then I'll take that point and put it right where I want to drill. that chucked up I'll go ahead and get my mark set another angle I noticed that the, uh, kind of the view is kind of blurred there all right so I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece out I'll measure my hole and uh, work up to getting um, a hole that's uh, equivalent in size Here's a little chart I have on the wall. Um, drill sizes. It's a, well, actually, I'm sorry. It's a, there's a shadow there, but this is a fraction to decimal conversion chart. So um, I got my measurement at 687. So I'll go find the next uh, measurement uh, closest to 687. So 6875. And I've got it uh, to a ten thousandths. Uh, that's an eleven sixteenths drill. It's a, a dimming drill bit set. I'll have to look it up because I'm not really sure um, if dimming was the guy that made it or whatever. Uh, here's the eleven sixteenths bit. So this should fit in here. And I'm feeling some tension, but then it comes around. Yep. Um, so I won't start with this. Um, I'll start with the, uh, let's see, uh, probably a 3 sixteenths and then just get larger and larger and larger. find a bolt now and so we can mount this in the bolt and then uh, chuck it up okay, here's the convoluted system I've come up with I made a mistake let me tell you I probably should have drilled this so a hole a more common size and then finished it later because uh, I don't really have 11 16 bolts that would work um, so I could cut another piece of plastic or I could rig it so what I've came up with is I'm going to take this bolt try to chuck it up in the lathe like that which should hold it steady a little washer here 
that they'll come up flush to the face of the chuck. Then I have a problem here where I've got slack, which I'll have to figure out a way to get rid of that. And then I'll tighten another bolt on top, that way to get the roundness. Anyways, that's kind of the plan. All right, let's see how straight we are. What I did here is I've just got another half, half inch bolt, and I'm just going to uh, cut the head of it down. This is what I came up with to get rid of the slop. I just uh, cut this with the lathe. So my camera's freezing up. It records and then right at the end it says recording failed. And when you play the video back, uh, it, there's no video. Anyway, uh, so I've got this set up. I've got the outside jaws in. I've got the uh, piece mounted here in the center. And uh, this cutter, I don't know what it is, but it's my boring bar. So let's go take a look at the measure. So we need an internal cut that is 1 6. We can say 1 7 5. 1 7 5. And then the depth we want on that is from that flat to there. So 0 0.303. Learning from A bomb. Thanks, buddy. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the cutter up to the to the work there. And then uh, I did a video on making this magnet mount and I changed the pivot point. There's uh, bolts there in the back, the four screws. You unloose them and you can rotate it 90 degrees, 180, or 360 if you want, uh, 360. Mm, I'm going to doubt that's going to be much help. But anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and put my mount. A 305 is what I'm looking for for my change. Just got my dial there. So, one, two, three. That's where I'd be finishing my cut. Somewhere in that vicinity. Okay, so. Anyway, there's a start of my cut. Okay, so now for the 7.5, this this dimension here. Oh, it just stopped recording on me again. God damn it. All right, so I will just, um, I had to re readjust my dial there. And I'm in, what, a thousandth? And uh, so three rotations in. Yeah, because the compressor, I'm going to SIP 15 to give it some space. So 275 is the diameter I'm trying to match, and I know I'm at 29. Oh, a little bit less than three inches.
Oop. So that's a pretty good match. Okay, so now we need an angle on here, a four degree or a five degree draft angle because this is a pattern for casting. So I got my angle totally backwards. Why didn't you all tell me that? Good thing I figured it out before I cut it. Maybe you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Just going parallel to that vise. I need to go five degrees the other angle, five degrees the other way. And I'm just eyeing down the side of this vise here to there. And it's about five or six degrees. Good enough. All right, let's go. Okay, I polished the piece up on a buffer a little bit. But there we go. So I'm going to put that down with uh, super glue. So guys, that concludes making the pattern for the single singer sewing wheel, uh, attempting to uh, create a draft angle, um, cleaning up all of this, uh, so I'll have a machining surface, and putting that plug in. Alright guys, thank you for watching. Hey, if you like this video, I'd appreciate if you do all those things that are on your screen. Thanks again.